Is digital signal processing bad for sound quality? And if not, what about digital volume control, equalizers, room correction and active crossovers? Well, that depends. This video could have been short by giving the answer that it all depends. It depends on your equipment, your acoustic environment and how critical a listener you are. Or even shorter, what's worse, the problem you try to solve or the aberration caused by the DSP. But I'm afraid that won't help you further. Let's see roughly how DSPs influence the sound quality and what the potential problems are. Digital signal processing can be done by the CPU and computers, but it's more efficient to use a chip that is specially designed as digital signal processor. Like the video processor in a computer. For audio devices often ARM processors are used. In more upmarket products a so-called field programmable gate array, FPGA for short, is used. These can be programmed optimally for the task at hand. The sound quality of the DSPs depend mainly on the code used, although of course the hardware interfacing and clocking will have influence too. The quality of the code, the computer instructions also called algorithms, depend on the skills of the team of programmers and developers and the budget available. The budget determines the development hours the team can spend and the price of the processor. The hours spent not only involve code writing but also evaluating the sound quality. I know from someone involved in such a process that the tiniest change in code can have great effects on the sound quality. A relatively cheap way is to use libraries the processor manufacturer make available to their clients. It usually leads to better sounding products if proprietary code is written. For FPGAs Code is, for as far as I know, always written by the audio manufacturer, like is the case with products by Cord Electronics, Grim Audio, PS Audio, Danafrips and the like. Therefore the sound character will differ per manufacturer and even per product. I know that Rob Watts, who does the code for the Cord DAX, deliberately choose a different sound character for Cord's lower end DAX than for the Cord Dave to match customers' expectations in each class. Simply put, a DSP is used to change the audio, like analog volume control, tone control, a dynamics processor and an electronics crossover does. One difference might be that in a DSP it doesn't matter if you filter 0.1 dB or 12 dBs, the moment you filter there is a sound quality loss. Whether that's audible depends on the quality of the algorithms used, the quality of your playback system and your ears. In my setup 3 DSP losses are hard to hear, if at all. Even in my setup 2 losses are often difficult to hear. In my pre-air acoustic setup 1 sound quality loss was already better audible and in my current set of one it is very clear. It's especially time smearing that I hear, that causes sibilance problems, reduced transient behaviour, poor stereo image and resolution reduction. As a result our auditory system has difficulty to interpret the spatial information of the recording. This leads to a poor discrimination between the reproduced music and the acoustics of the room. The loudspeaker's location, inaudible in optimal stereo setups, will easily be heard. The brain cannot distinguish the recording from the listening room. The same phenomenon I hear in for instance amplifiers. The better they are, the less they suffer from this. The resolution of a DSP is for a large part defined by the bit depth. It might be clear that a DSP that works with 64 bit depth can be more precise than one with 32 bit depth, even when the source material is only 16 bit. Another fact might be the amount of DSP steps used. If the audio signal can be processed in one go, 
there will be less rounding errors since the processing is followed by a rounding stage. This is best explained by shopping in a supermarket. In my country 1 and 2 euro cent coins are not used. Payments are rounded off to 5 cents. But the products are priced in cents like 1.98, 5.04 and so on. In this table we see 5 products. In the actual price column the actual prices are added and when needed rounded to 5 cents at the pay desk. In the rounded column each price is individually rounded to 5 cents and then added. As you can see the price at the pay desk now is 8 cents higher because of the individual rounding of the prices. With digital processing something similar happens. When all processing is done in say 64 bit and at the end rounded and converted to 16 or 24 bit this will give a better result than when the processing is done in two or more stages with rounding in between. And then there is dithering. This is used when the bit depth needs to be reduced. Since most modern DSPs work at a higher bit depth than the 16 to 24 bits used by you and me, dithering will always take place after the digital processing. It is done by adding a tiny bit of noise to the signal, usually half an LSB. From what I understand there are several kinds of noise with their own sound characters. Not that you hear the noise itself, it's the effect it has on the sound quality. To give you a feel of what it does, look at this sine wave. The top and the bottom lines are the minimum value that would change the least significant bit LSB from 0 to 1. As you can see the sine wave does not touch the LSB level, so the output would be zero. Put it differently, there is no output. When some noise is added, the sine wave now touches the LSB level, so there will be an output. This is a rather simplified explanation of course, but the effect of a proper dittering can have a profound effect on the sound quality. Digital signal processing, like analog signal processing, gives losses in sound quality. But it might give less loss in sound quality than other solutions. Take for instance upsampling for low bit converters. When done to perfection, this for now appears to be the best way to convert digital audio into analog audio. Standalone upsamplers like those by Cord and Aurelic and an as integrated in digital players by Grimm outperform non oversampling DACs at, at least to my ears. That doesn't mean that oversampling is always the best choice. I rather have a non oversampling DAC than an oversampling DAC that uses a poor algorithm because of the limited computational power in its DAC chip. With the ever increasing capabilities of chips, more affordable products are getting better by the day, although it still will take considerable time before the sound quality of those high end products will be met. If an equalizer is needed in a stereo, you are choosing for compromise. A well chosen stereo carefully placed in a normal room should not need equalizing. See my video about loudspeaker placement. Especially when sound character is in play, I'm almost sure you combine equipment that doesn't go together too well. If it is acoustics that is the problem, keep watching, I'll discuss room correction further on. Any form of equalizing will cause unwanted phase behavior, leading to time smearing and thus should be avoided. A special form of equalizer is the active crossover. It is essentially a number of equalizers optimized for this function. It is used to bypass the passive crossover in loudspeakers. If you are willing to invest enormous amounts of time and money or if you are educated in this field, using an active crossover can lead to very good results. But it's not easy. Using high quality gear and good loudspeaker placement will keep acoustic problems to a minimum. The better the equipment, the less time related problems. 
This makes that our auditory system, our hearing, can easier distinguish between the sound coming from the stereo and the sound of your room. Our brain can then ignore room sounds to a large degree. But high quality gear doesn't come cheap. Think my reference set to one level. Using a room correction system here would reduce the sound quality due to aberrations introduced by the digital signal processing. For those at a lower budget, and that would have included me if I didn't have this job, acoustics will in most cases cause some problem. A good room correction system can be a proper solution then, since the DSP aberrations degrade the sound quality far less than the acoustic problem it solves. But it's important to select a room correction system that not only corrects amplitude but does also do time correction, like Dirac Live. This means that using a parametric equalizer tuned to measured problem frequencies won't do it, for as far as I'm concerned anyway. Regardless whether it is a standalone equalizer, an equalizer integrated in a music player software or an automatic equalizer as used by some room correction software. I never use equalizers in my stereos, not even in the 1100 Euro Setup 3. A few years ago I used the lovely Mini DSP SHD Studio with direct live room correction in Setup 1 when the Audio Note, Soro SE Amp and the MyTech Brooklyn were used in it. It gave a very good result given the price and possibilities. And I used direct live on my surround setup. With the current setup one, there only remains a small low frequency problem and I think I know the solution for that too. I'll report on that end January 2024. To round up, I don't dislike DSPs per definition, but I use it only when it's the best alternative. The same goes for room correction. I don't use it unless it's a better solution. And just equalizing isn't room correction as far as I'm concerned. On that bombshell we come to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed of new videos around. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or a link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting your work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.